Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to plot data using matplotlib. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, pick up where we left off before and open up CodeWriter. So if you remember, this is the editor we installed in the previous video. And we're going to create a new Python file here, new source file. And let's call it um, plotting.py. Now in Windows, you don't need the .py because it automatically adds it here in the editor. So let's save that. Let's open up PowerShell. Remember PowerShell is Microsoft's command line utility where we can actually run programs that we write. So I'm gonna change into my Python directories that I created in the previous video. And let's just make sure everything's still working. Python 3, hello world. Oh, yep. So matplotlib is working. And the first thing I want to do is just go through the Zybooks examples. So Zybooks um, had you go through and it showed you how to plot. But Zybooks doesn't have matplotlib built in. So that's what we're going to do on these machines now, on your own computer. All right. So here's the code they gave us. And you can see they're using a CSV file. So that stands for Comma Separated Values File. It's a very common format for storing data. They're using this file. They, they open it up, and then they just plot the values. If you scroll up to just below where they have the plot, you can see the data source. And actually, if you click on Ocean Temp CSV, it downloads that file. I'm going to copy that into my Python directory. Just so we have the data file in the same directory as our code, so it's easy to find. All right, so there's Ocean Temp now in the same directory. Okay, and let's just enter in the code that they've given us here. All right, so the first thing, of course, is to import matplotlib. Matplot as Now, there was an earlier homework showing you how to deal with files. This with command just is a convenience uh, keyword that says, when you open up a file, I'll automatically close it for you. You don't have to have the open close uh, commands every time. As soon as we're finished with the file, if we have this with, it'll automatically take care of cleaning it up. All right, so we're gonna open the file. Give it the file name, oceantemp.csv. And we're going to open that file and give it a name of temp file for temperature file. Notice that this with keyword has a section of code. So basically when the section of code is done, that's when it makes sure to clean up um, all the files you might have opened. So we have a colon here, new section of code. We have to indent. We're going to create an empty list. And then we're going to have a for loop that reads each line of our temperature file and stores that into our list. So we're going to say 4t in temp file. And then for each T in temp file, it means each line in temp file. We're going to append whatever that was, whatever that line was, to um, our temps list. And we're going to cast it to a floating point value um, from a string. All right, so far so good. Let's take a look at what's actually in. Um, 
that CSV file. So as I said, CSV files are really very common. Um, most data analysis, spreadsheet, database programs will be able to read them, including Excel. So I'm just using Excel here to show you what the CSV file has in it. And you can see it's just a, a file with a, a floating point value on each line, a single floating point value on each line. So in our loop, we loop over all the lines. We're taking each of those floating point values and adding them to our list. Right, that is the end of that section of code. So we're going to go past the indent. And we're actually done with the file entirely. So now we're back at the same level, um, at the starting level. So we're outside of this with now. So with again will automatically close that file for us. All right, so the, we're going to plot temperature and years. Um, years will be on the x-axis, temperature will be on the y-axis. So let's go ahead and set up a range. And we're going to start at 1850. That's the date of the first line in our CSV file. And it ends with 2012. All right. And then all we have to do to plot x and y values, in this case, years and temps, is say plt.plot. And then plt.show. All right. So this is what Zybox tells us we get from that. Let's give it a try. Make sure actually plotting. I run the plotting, not plot test. There we go. And it worked. All right, so now we have our x values, our y values, and we can see temperature over uh, years. All right, so for the next example, we're going to plot another line onto the same plot. So um, this example in Zybooks is kind of funny. It actually comes from the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, or Pastafarianism. Um, this is a, a joke religion that um, one of their jokes is that the number of pirates is inversely correlated with temperature. So as pirates have gone down over the years, temperature has gone up. Uh, it's an extremely sarcastic organization, as you can imagine, um, and that's the spirit in which this example is given. All right, so pirate years equals range 1850, 20, and we're going to increment our range here by 25 years at a time because we don't have pirate information for every year we only have it for every 25 years all right here's the number of pirates in thousands so 20,000 and 1850 17,000 15,000 Four, five, zero point oh two five. All right, so here's our list, x and y values. And if we just say plot, plot pirate years as our x values. Say plot show, it'll actually plot, or it's supposed to plot, on the same plot that we already had our temperature versus years. So let's try that. Let's go 
as our figure. And there we go. Colors are slightly different, but it's the same plot. All right, let's move on to styling plots. So plotting is all about presenting information um, in a compelling way. So plotting is really all about learning how to visualize data, how to set the colors correctly, how to make lines really easily um, distinguish from one another, how to make sure the lines are separated enough. In a lot of ways, it's pretty artistic. The whole point is to communicate some message in a compelling way. And that's what most of the plot functions you'll come across do. So for example, it might be useful to be able to change the look of a line. Maybe you have a lot of lines you're plotting and you want to be able to change some of them to dash lines, some solid lines, change the colors, and matplotlib um, provides that. And as I've said a couple of times in previous videos, matplotlib, it's named matplotlib because it's fashioned after the way that MATLAB does plotting. And so a lot of the syntax here you'll see for how to format the color and the, and the dashing on a line is, comes exactly from MATLAB. All right, so let's plot, uh, let's see, let's change the plotting on the pirates here. I'm just gonna add an additional parameter. It's a string. The first letter here is the color of the string, so it's going to be red. And if I do a double dash here, it's going to dash the line. So let's see what that looks like. And now our line is dashed. And it's pretty intuitive. If I want to make this um, blue, I just type in B here for blue. Run it again. Is our blue dash line. Now if this works the same way as MATLAB, because blue can't, B can't stand for black and blue, K is used for black. Let's see if that's true in MATLAB, in MATLAB. And indeed it is. So K is how you get a black line. And so on. So if I type G here and then just a dot, we ought to get a different kind of line style. And in fact, what we get are points for the, for the data instead of a line at all. If I change this to dot dash, the dash. Let's try that. Then I get my line back. Okay. And in fact, here's a table that um, has been provided in Cybooks that shows you exactly how to format these strings. So you can have all kinds of different markers for the points. If I do um, a caret here, that's the up chevron, and a dash, let's see what that looks like. So now we have a up pointing triangle at each of the data points and then a line connecting them. And here are circles connecting, actually orange circles connecting a line. All right, so the 
next thing I want to look at is how to change the line width. So in this next example, we're going to have a red marker. So open circles comes next and connecting them with a line. But we're going to do a couple of other things. Let's move on to the next line here. We're going to set the width of the line to five. We're going to play around with the marker size. Set that to five as well. And alpha equals 0 0.35. Alpha um, in graphics is the transparency of a particular color. All right. Save that and give it a try. And we get exactly what I was shown in Zybooks. So it's red. We have circles here. We've changed the size slightly and the width to make it wider. And we've made it slightly transparent. Let's see what happens if we increase that marker size um, a lot more. So you can see how we can make this bigger. And again, I want to emphasize the point of all this is to make plots that are really compelling, that have some message. If you want to emphasize this pirate line, for example, that making it red and large with these large circles is a really good way of drawing the eye to it and not emphasizing so much this blue line at the bottom. There's a whole science to uh, data presentation, and a lot of books have been written on it. All right. Next thing I want to do, most plots, most scientific plots, will have a legend that explains what each line is. So let's do that next. So to add a legend, it's simply calling the legend function. Um, on the plot object, we're going to set shadow equals true. These are all aesthetic things that um, simply make the plot look better. Uh, just like in MATLAB, um, and I'll do a video on plotting in MATLAB too, things like location, where to place the legend, are simple strings that say upper right, lower left, center, and the plotting tool knows what you mean by that and puts the legend in the right place. All right, so we just sent a label, give a name to each of the lines that we're drawing here. Temp. And label, what next line? Label. Now we have our legend. So it just puts a label, whatever the label we wrote here, and the line format next to those labels so we can tell which line is it that's the ocean temp, which line is the number of pirates. All right, let's say that we want to do a bar plot rather than a line plot. We might have categorical data that we want to show. Um, that's really pretty easy in matplotlib. All we have to do is give the names or our categories. So let's say we have a group A, a group B, and a group C. And we have some values associated with those groups. Uh, maybe there are 10 of group A, 20 of group B, and 57 of group C. We can just use the bar function, which does the bar plot two plot names against values. And there's our bar plot. <clears throat> OK.
Okay, the next thing I want to show you are subplots. Um, it's very common in scientific reports to want to have a lot of figures uh, or a lot of plots inside of a larger figure. Maybe you want to show different aspects of the same data or you're just using it to save space. And I'll show you what that looks like. So the first thing we're going to do is define a figure. So we're going to tell this figure what size it is. It's going to be 9 by 3. And the way we create uh, subplots and add subplots to this figure is just by saying plt subplot. That will create a, the first subplot. And then we give it a three-digit number. Now, the way this three-digit number works is the first digit is the number of rows in the layout inside this figure. So if I had nine subplots uh, and I wanted them to be laid out three by three, I would write three rows, three columns. In this case, I'm just going to add three plots, three subplots, with one row and three columns. And I'll show you what that looks like. So we're going to say one row, three columns, and this plot is going to go in the first position. Right. We're going to have three of these plots. So let me lay those out right away. And again, we're specifying that this is going to have one row, three columns, and this plot is going to be in the second position. So normally when you're laying out these subplots, the first two digits will always be the same. They define um, the layout of the larger figure. All right. And this last plot is going to go in the third position. Okay. Now the way we add um, to a subplot is by doing a bar plot or a scatter plot or a regular plot right after the subplot. So whatever happens here after we defined our first subplot but before our next subplot gets added to the first one. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just going to do a bar plot here of names and values. For the second subplot, for simplicity, I'm going to plot the same data, but I could plot our pirate temperature data here or anything I want but I'm going to plot the same data just with a line plot instead of a bar plot. Like that. And then finally on the third subplot I'm going to do a scatter plot. Scatter plot is just like a line plot but it doesn't include um, the lines that join up the data points. And let's change one of these things. Let's make this one um, be a blue dash line. All right. Let's save that and see what it looks like. And here are three plots. So I hope it's clear what I mean now when I say one row, three columns, and first position. So there's one row of plots, there's three columns, and this plot, this bar plot, is going in the first position. So if I change this up a little bit, maybe I change this to a two by two. So two columns, sorry, two rows, two columns, first position. This will always be the same, these first two numbers. And we're going to have a fourth plot here. In the fourth position, uh, let's do another line plot, but we'll change the color. And now we have our two by two layout. All right, let's take a look at how to add axes labels next. We want to be able to label our axes so people understand what we're doing. And the way we do that, uh, let's start with a simpler figure. 
So let's just plot our data again. And um, let's just say that the x axis is going to be labeled uh, groups, and the y axis. Save that and plot it. And you can see now we have our X and Y axes. All right, so that's the basics of plotting in um, matplotlib. There's far, far more uh, that we can do, and I'll make another video with more advanced plotting shortly. But that's the basics of how to do plotting in matplotlib.